Hello, Salam Alaikum. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. But can, can you hear me? Alaikum uh, Salam. I can hear you, Dr. Ibrahim. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Good. I good, hope you, good. You, you can hear me also, right? I think. Yes, yes, yes. Everything, is everything going all right uh, at, the, at your side? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, everything is fine. That's good, great, good. So. Inshallah, then inshallah we can start, inshallah. Excellent. Good, th thank you very much. As yeah. usual, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, attending this important workshop uh, by Dr. Ibrahim Garba. We always call Dr. Ibrahim our uh, natural intelligence gym at the university. Uh, Dr. Garba is a digital transformation leadership and a human capital developer hailing from the United Kingdom. With a strong background in policy analysis for strategic planning, Dr. Ibrahim has proven expertise in the field of linguistics. Currently serving as a trainer at King Abdulaziz University, Dr. Garba specializes in blended learning and e-learning. His profile is distinguished by practical and reflective research on the application of learning theories within the academic setting. With a keen interest in the field, Dr. Ibrahim's work focuses on the integration of learning theories to optimize education outcomes in the 21st century. His career has spanned over the last 25 years within the Middle East region. At the Academic Writing Center, he offered two or three excellent workshops about generating strong arguments for better writing tips for publishing research papers, and today's excellent workshop is going to be about writing and action research. Of course, this is only at the Academic Writing Center. According to the other faculties and uh, other colleges, he presented a lot, a lot of workshops. The floor is yours, Dr. Ibrahim. Inshallah, we'll enjoy your new presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's always nice to uh, be part of the uh, Academic Writing Center's uh, seminars. You have amazing uh, workshops uh, uh, every semester for, for us to enjoy. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this. And uh, yeah, so today we are going to be looking at how to write uh, action research. And um, with that amazing introduction by Dr. Kamal, I don't really need to say much about myself, I suppose. I'm just going to get straight into it. And uh, even though it says, you know, action research, the basics here, uh, what I'm going to be uh, looking at is the things or the thinking you need when you uh, when you when you need to write this uh, sort of uh, type of action or type of research. Um, what you have to remember, and this is where, um, if I can just turn my laser on, what you have to remember is action research involves a lot of things. So this is what we're looking at here in the middle. It's the cover of my uh, presentation, but you will see this again and again as we uh, progress. So first I'd like to thank uh, the English Language Institute's Writing Center for inviting me again for this workshop and uh, it's always a pleasure for me to uh, uh, respond to any of your uh, invitations. I, I, I love taking part in these and I hope you also gain something from uh, some of what we will be discussing today. So what is action research? Well, action research is an approach basically to uh, research. So you, you start with some kind of problem that you have and you uh, try to change it and improve that particular situation. So uh, the point is you're working in the real world and you're trying to solve real problems and this is where you do research. And then when you do the research, the findings you have, you apply them in your work. So basically when you look at the purpose here of doing the research, you can compare it with uh, traditional research where your aim is completely different there. You know, in, in normal research, you, you might have some kind of uh, problem or phenomenon and you might want to test some sort of theory or hypothesis maybe that you begin with. And then you do the data you know, collection part and analysis and then you, you, you say you've contributed to some sort of uh, theory you know, or development. And, and that's different completely from uh, action research. Uh, it was started by a person called uh, Llewellyn and he this is back in 1954 and since then uh, action research has sort of like evolved so to speak you know so um, 
I'm going to use an example of an action research that I've been involved in in 2021 with uh, Dr. Al Suwaye, and she, uh, she, she's also our colleague from the English Language Institute. And uh, this action research paper uh, was used to help uncover the assumptions that were needed to um, to solve students' issues in learning. So what we did in this paper was. Uh, the teacher thought to herself, well, I have a lot of uh, female students and they use WhatsApp and how can we use WhatsApp to help them improve, uh, you know, uh, their English. So what we what we did in this paper uh, was to write down uh, what was involved and then and then that that became the research, basically. So we were looking at communication. We were looking at, uh, you know, the interactions that take place in the classroom between students. We were looking at so many different things. And what this tells you is that action research can be used uh, from different disciplines. So as English teachers, we used it for solving an English language teaching problem. But you can have action research in nursing, engineering, you know, uh, business, and so many different uh, disciplines basically ha have used it here. Uh, we just ha we have an example of how we use it. And I'll come back to this again uh, when I look at how we used our research uh, to guide uh, the opinion of the students and then collect their information uh, and, and then share it to uh, say our intervention worked with our students. So we didn't look at them as, you know, we were experimenting on them and, 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 and then we researched them. We looked at them as they were helping us learn something about what we were doing. And this is one of the things about action research that differs from traditional research. So when you're writing your action research, you have to remember at the purpose level, you're coming in as someone who is trying to solve a real problem and then uh, apply the solutions and then see what happens and then write about it. So you're, you're using real, uh, real life problems basically uh, as part of your research. And basically uh, one of the things we discovered again was that the factual knowledge that we gained from the reflections that we used uh, guided what we were doing and promoted the improvement of uh, learning in the classroom. So we had evidence now to say, what we did with WhatsApp in the classroom uh, improved students' learning, and this is the proof, right? You see, so it wasn't just um, our intervention worked. We 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 sort of like we're going to use that uh, improvement for another action research, which I will come back to uh, in, in a few minutes. So the point I'm trying to make here is, and I'll repeat this again and again, uh, when you're writing action research, it's it involves a cycle. So you're doing a lot of planning, acting, observing, and reflecting. And at each one of these stages, there are things that take place which enables you as the researcher uh, to, for example, support the students. So these guys, these researchers here, uh, they were saying that uh, their research uh, supported the students uh, using questionnaires that they collected and observations uh, for, of the data to say that their intervention uh, improved the learning of their students. So. Um, let's have a look at what what does action research involve then when you when you, when you talk about the uh, uh, stages of action research. So uh, basically, at the very beginning, you need to have an issue or problem that you want to solve. And here we're talking about um, you as a teacher or you as a student uh, or an administrator even uh, having some kind of practical problem that you want to solve, and you don't know what's going on there. And it's been intriguing you, and you're wondering, you know, how can I solve this? What am I going to do? Uh, and you go and look at the literature, and you find out, you know, uh, what it says about it, and and that becomes your research. You see, so now you're thinking about how you can link some sort of uh, research with your workplace or your learning or, or your teaching uh, to improve it. And then you collect the data and analyze the data, and then you apply the changes you see that you've sort of like uh, uh, thought about. And then based on that, you, you you write up your findings. So it's pretty much like any kind of research in terms of the traditional sense of research. But um, the actual way you position yourself when you're doing the research is a little bit different from traditional research. And so uh, I'll give you another example. When we were doing our research, uh, we used a questionnaire to collect data from the students about what they thought about what we were doing with WhatsApp you know, for communicating in English. And that, that kind of like communication was something that they used uh, in, in, the, in the classroom uh, to help them improve their learning. So what we were doing with the data was to ask the students, you know, to tell us what they thought of what we were doing so that we can improve 
uh, our teaching based on what the students were doing. So uh, our findings said that the students had a positive sort of view of what we were doing and it, it helped them learn, it encouraged them. And it also was, uh, uh, you know, a, a challenging because there was a lot of information that students had in, in the group. Because, you know, when you talk about WhatsApp, you, you know, the teacher was sending things, the students were sharing things. And I think uh, it was a bit overwhelming uh, for, you know, teaching. Uh, and this is something uh, that uh, we shared as part of our research. So if you're going to do some action research with students or, or, or teachers, uh, read our paper to help you understand the, the stages uh, involved uh, up to the findings here. Especially. Now, what's the goal? when you want to do the action research, what is the point of doing it? Well, as I said earlier, you are always involved in bringing about some kind of positive change or improvement uh, in your uh, situation. So your situation could be, uh, you know, we have all these uh, different types of students and I want to know if I do something with them online, is it going to help them or, uh, you know, questions like this they, that intrigue you, you know, every, every time you have some sort of uh, puzzle, uh, in terms of what students are doing or what you're doing, that is where action research tells you, well, this could be a good goal for you to use uh, to help you um, improve yourself as a practitioner uh, in, your, in your specific area. So here, our goal was uh, to try and implement an intervention with our students and then see how it improved their participation, their communication, and it also was something that uh, the administrators at uh, KAU, King of Aziz University, also found interesting because we were using uh, technology like Blackboard also at the time. So how did we support uh, our students with this kind of integration? So you see, the way we position ourselves, and the way we looked at the purpose of the research is completely different from your normal traditional research. Um, and why? Well, again, when you do action research, you have to remember that it's it's sort of like uh, there's there's like a, a, a sort of a, a web a, a, an interlocking area between yourself in the society where you are and the things that you're experiencing the things that you're doing and then yourself as a researcher so this area here where they all meet is where uh, your participatory action research sort of uh, differs from traditional research so basically uh, you you kind of like uh, see yourself as uh, someone who is not detached but pretty much connected with the research connected with uh, your environment and connected uh, with what you're experiencing also you see uh, so you're not detaching yourself from the research you're not being entirely objective you know as traditional research sort of demands um, some of the features again of uh, action research is that it's very collaborative so what do i mean by you know you're attached to the research one of them is you need to work with other people. You need to uh, think about the different stakeholders in your research as uh, potential uh, for giving you information that you will use in your in your study. So as you're writing, everything counts. You're not ignoring things as, oh, this is subjective, so it's not going to be useful. No, it, everything that you uh, encounter uh, counts. So it has a different philosophy, basically, uh, when you think about uh, action research. Um, also, it's very much cyclical, uh, cyclical, which means it moves from uh, planning, acting, observing, and reflecting. And I don't mean this in a very sort of like a linear, linear way. So, you know, you have to do one, and then you do the second one, and then you do the third one, then you do the fourth one. No, I mean, uh, of course, you have to plan, and you have to act, and then you have to observe and reflect. Uh, you can't start reflecting unless you're planning. But then reflecting means you're thinking about what you're doing. So you could be reflecting at the planning stage, at the acting stage, at the observing stage, you see. Uh, you could also be uh, looking at the acting stage and saying, well, I could have done this better in, when I was planning, you see. And this is how you improve your, uh, this, this, this is where the features of action research inform you to tell you where you can improve uh, yourself and your practice. Um, so when you look at, for example, King Abdulaziz University, this is where we work. This is our environment. This is our context. This is where uh, our um, uh, influence also uh, comes in when we're doing action research. You you can't ignore uh, the con. You can't ignore your department. You can't ignore uh, who you are basically. Uh, although this can be challenging, but again, this is where ethics comes in, and we will look at that also uh, in a little bit. So, 
Uh, what does it mean when you're when you're planning uh, action research? Uh, you see, it means you're moving from one stage to the next stage in a cycle. But it doesn't mean that you have to complete one before you go to the other. No, what it means is you you have to do all of them. Uh, you have you know you you can't obviously if you don't have anything to conclude, you don't have any data, you, don't, you can't write anything in the conclusion. But you you are uh, constantly trying to um, gather information that will help you move to the next stage but that information that you gather is very useful for you to uh, position yourself and say well what did i learn from this you see so now what what did i learn from this is pretty much different from uh now that i've finished the research uh, i've published it that's it i'm going to move to the next stage you see your learning is very 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 important when you're doing action research and this is where when you're writing your action research is very important to remember what it is that you're learning um, I might even point out here that, you know, when it comes to um, developing your theory in traditional research, you're testing the theory, you know, you, you're trying to see if you can generalize sometimes also to a broader setting, you know. With action research, you are looking at your specific context and then trying to see what you what you can get from this, how you can improve that particular situation. So unless situations are similar, it's pretty much difficult for you to uh, generalize uh, what you're doing or learning. Uh, in your in your specific uh, situation. So, for example, during the pandemic, uh, you could have written something about, you know, how uh, the, the troubles that you, you had, you know, in terms of uh, teaching online. And if you're coming from the School of Medicine, School of Dentistry, uh, Pharmacology, uh, all these different uh, engineering uh, business, whichever department or, or discipline you're coming from, you, you could be using this to stage your um, action research so you could say well you know at the planning stage we, we, we plan to use blackboard uh, and this is what happened uh, and then we in, we intervene you know we took action and, and this is what it means by action here and, and then you analyze the results and then after that you concluded something from it and then you again change the plan because you realize something happened in the action you see so it could be in the analysis you discovered well wait a minute we should have done something and then you go back all right so even though it is cyclical it doesn't mean it's line, linear you know, cyclical means you're moving in cycles, but at the same time, it, it means that you are learning something as you move from stage to, uh, to stage, and you can go backwards also, you know, uh, at the same time. So basically, uh, some of the steps involved uh, in action research is to identify your research question or problem which needs to be addressed. So once you know what you want to study, uh, because like all traditional research, you start with something that you know, is bugging you that you, you want to solve, you know, there's an issue here uh, that you're thinking of. And you're not thinking of the issue like, you know, it's a problem that, that is uh, challenging someone, you know, we need to solve this problem, we need to get rid of this problem. No, thinking of uh, the problem in terms of you need some kind of evidence, some data to explain it so that you can uh, reach a conclusion. So your whole commitment to the study uh, is something you know you 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 are committed basically to, to the study when you use these five steps uh, in the action research so you start with your question and your question could be similar to you know something like um, wh what am i learning from this particular uh, intervention so with us uh, when we were doing the what top study and we've done a second one based on the first one uh, our first study was, you know, what, what can we learn from our students who use WhatsApp, basically. And we tried to gather the data to help us understand what we were learning here. You know, from the students, you know, we, we understood that, you know, we gave them a questionnaire, we interviewed some of them, and we found out that, you know, uh, it was useful. And then we start to think about better ways to, you know, write our study. Uh, and then we improved the teaching. Uh, this is like from 2021, this is 2024 now. So you imagine how many students we've taught and used what's up with them. We improved what we were doing basically. And then we are committed now to uh, the next, which is what, uh, what we can learn from this, right? So basically when you are collecting the data, uh, you are observing, you know, this is, you, you know, your interviews, your surveys and other methods. When you're collecting the data, basically you are, you're trying to move from, um, sort of like studying the issue to understand exactly what's going on so that you can analyze the data using whatever uh, means that you, you you outlined for yourself to analyze the data. And that, that acts as feedback for you, for further action, which you use to evaluate your, uh, your practice. So uh, as you write this stage of your uh, action research, you have to remember that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, action research has specific sort of like guidelines to help you move from stage to stage. Uh, it's a very, very uh, 
very much uh, uh, researched area. So when you when we finish this, you can have a look at our paper. You can have a look at some action research books to help you understand the approaches to, to writing it. But as you can see, uh, every stage along the way, there's something that you do, and it's pretty much uh, guided by the literature and the scholars uh, of action research. So let's look at the cycle that I mentioned earlier. Uh, with our intervention with WhatsApp, we made a study and we planned and we took action. We published the paper, we reflected, and that will lead us to another study. So this will be the second cycle. And then it moves on and on to the next cycle until we say, okay, we've learned something here. Let's move to uh, something else. So with action research, you're not done just by doing one paper. And then that's it. You know, you've discovered something new and you shared it with the world and that's it. Action research uh, demands that you sort of like improve your practice and say, well, this is how we improved our practice. And uh, we addressed some issues that were immediate, but then, you know, when you're working with people, when you're working with students, when you're working with machines and technology, there will always be issues that, that come up every day. Uh, and these issues are worth investigating if you have the time and the effort and, of course, uh, the willingness to, to engage in action research. But if you did, this is something you could do, you know, look for the patterns and look for the trends and look for potential solutions to help you uh, move from one cycle to another cycle. And here, what I, what I mean by cycle is this is a whole research on its own, you see, but it's connected to this one because this, this second cycle was based on the first one. So whatever it is you learned in the reflection stage is what you will use as sort of like input for the next stage, you see. Uh, this is why it's cyclical. Um, so basically, you're, you're developing and implementing your uh, changes and you know you 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 when you want to actually now start writing about your action research as you would with any research of course you define the topic so you could do this with your literature review stage here where you uh, find out from other scholars what they said about the topic and you sort of like narrow down what you want to write about uh, of course uh, when you are uh, looking at what uh, scholars are saying about the topic it, it could lead you to anywhere you know <laughs> this is so vast you know uh, it's like the universe basically uh, what people talk about is is, is you know uh, out there so the more you gather information about the topic the more you realize well i'm going to research a specific area and uh, create my own space there and then you you start working on uh, how you enter the action research based on what you're working on your thesis statement basically and then you evaluate the sources and you know uh, of course you're always citing your sources as you as you write and then you you publish your paper or when you get to the, the, the eighth stage here. So basically you are moving from one cycle to the next cycle. And at the same time, uh, this is like what you do with research. But the difference of course is with, uh, with, with, with action research, you are looking at the outcomes and, and evaluating the outcomes so that you can make some sort of adjustment to your workplace or to your environment. And then you move to the next uh, sort of like uh, uh, cycle or research. So uh, one of the things you also do is you reflect. And when I say reflect, I mean you look at what you're doing, and think about ways to improve it. So as you look at the topic that you're going to write about, you're thinking about, well, what are the general things, what are the things that I need to look at here in general? And what are the things that I need to think about, uh, which are specific to my research question? And uh, what kind of uh, data do I need? What kind of tools am I going to use to help me uh, you know, do the action research. And you, when you evaluate this, of course, it will help you with your methodology again, uh, as you think about the, uh, the meaning of whether you're going to look at numbers here or, or textual data, you know, this, this is what I mean by methodology. So you are looking at how you will improve uh, based on how you look at uh, yourself and the data and what that means for data uh, gathering. And then you, you repeat the, the, the whole process again when you, when you look at uh, the next uh, cycle of uh, action research. So uh, with with our um, action research, there are many uh, uses or, or benefits that we have for uh, action research. Uh, some of them could be, you know, uh, the benefit of improving our uh, workplace. So you have to think about the problems you have in your workplace according to the literature, according to what you're learning. And, and this kind of thinking is uh, what we call high order thinking is different from, you know, just talking to friends and saying, oh, well, you know, uh, the students are, are very lazy in it. You know, they're, they're, they they do not they don't, they don't bring their books to class or uh, the teachers are always like this, you know, they're, 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 they're from this particular country or they're from that particular place. You know, the generalizations we have 
uh, our own uh, biases, our own uh, sort of like, uh, they're based on what we know basically in our, our own environment. And they, they might not necessarily be the, uh, the correct uh, way to look at the, the issue also. So when we look at, for example, students uh, using, um, I don't know, technology to learn, you, you could you could broaden your understanding using action research because it, you know this whole idea of diagnosing, analyzing, getting feedback, taking action, evaluating, and then reflecting on this is a very deep way of learning. You know, so it's not like your surface way of learning because nothing is so straightforward. You know, it's pretty much complex, and there are many challenges involved in this. And action research tells you, well, these are the challenges, these are the benefits, these are the issues. This is by your whole research. This is a very deep way of thinking. These are the benefits, basically, of uh, using action research. So you will find that people are using it uh, in different uh, walks of life because it makes you have control of what's going on in your workplace. The, the control is called uh, empowerment, and what that means is when you're empowered, it means you you have uh, you have the um, the tools that you need to solve problems in your workplace which means you kind of like uh, have ownership uh, in, in what you're doing. Uh, it's a shame if you if you ask me uh, uh, at KU, for example, uh, we have a lot of wonderful students, really intelligent students, and it will be great to see how uh, teachers are empowered to not only use the technology, but uh, to improve the learning according to their understanding of uh, how they plan and build their departments and how they find that meaningful so that, you know, when you think, look at the plans that you're making, especially today in these days of sustainable uh, development goals that we have uh, going on everywhere, uh, KAU can learn a lot from, from teachers uh, uh, such as yourselves who are doing research in their own workplace to improve what they do. And they say, look, this is how we add value to uh, the uh, strategic plans and to the mission and so on. So, uh, this whole process of inquiry is, is a benefit, a huge benefit to uh, anyone who is involved in uh, research in their workplace. Uh, you can see some of the applications of uh, uh, sharing information that I've said with decision makers. Uh, for example, with farmers, for example, they have different objectives. They have different types of data that they would need you know, to improve their uh, farming methods. Uh, there are different types of uh, sources that they could look at. And, and then there's also the issue of collecting the data. It could be, you know, interviews or observations or, you know, uh, some sort of like uh, discussion with the farmers also. And you can analyze it using all kinds of tools like SPSS or content analysis, descriptive statistics, uh, you know, different ways of uh, analyzing the data basically. So uh, basically action research is flexible. It allows you to uh, research using the tools that are out there based on traditional research methods that you already know, right? So uh, it also leads to what I said earlier about sustainable solutions that are uh, specific to KU. So I'm, I'm talking about KU because we're coming from KU. Uh, if you're coming from a different practice, you look at the research that you're going to do according to that context. So within KU, for example, we have so many different units, so many different uh, deanships, centers, uh, faculties, colleges. So you could be looking at your research according to that context, uh, and you will find that uh, action research or writing uh, using action research methods uh, will change the way you look at so many things. Uh, of course, there are challenges to everything, and action research also has its own challenges. Uh, nonetheless, uh, this could be uh, to do with the time. Um, when we started our study with uh, Dr. Al Sawyer, I think this was in 2018 or something like that. And then, you know, because of the pandemic and everything, we couldn't uh, continue. So we, we we gathered the data, we did everything, but the writing and uh, targeting where to publish it took a lot of time. Uh, and in the end, we, we published at uh, uh, a very a good journal that uh, teachers could access because writing action research should be something that should be accessible to teachers, especially, right? So. Uh, you can get our paper uh, from from online, and you can easily sort of like read read it. But again, it's time consuming when you when you want to write action research because you need to think about so much uh, that's involved in the in the actual study. For example, when you think about the outcome of your study uh, and you compare it with traditional research, for example, uh, in traditional research, your uh, 
you're you're thinking about you know the the publication you're thinking about the advancing theory you know you're thinking about how to contribute uh, to existing knowledge base in with action research your outcome is completely different you're focusing more on the change you're making in your workplace and the satisfaction you get because you improved it and if you don't understand this you might have some sort of a clash with the uh, rights and action research. Of course, there's nothing wrong with publishing for the sake of publishing, but you want to, when you do action research, one of the challenges is to understand that you need to spend time to see how you are improving uh, your uh, practice. So, uh, you, so this this could cause, <laughs> this, this could have uh, uh, a reason for people to resist sort of like uh, change, you know? So unless you're willing to create change, nothing happens, right? Uh, this, this is a pretty famous unless, unless we change something nothing changes as they say right so uh, if you're skeptic about change and if you don't want to do anything that will sort of like shake the branch so to speak action research is not for you you, you know action research empowers it gives you that ability to make small changes in your practice so uh, you don't have to start with the big change focus on the little changes focus on your environment what can you change you know uh, start there uh, don't don't start from the, the big issues. Start with the little issues first, and uh, you know you need to be very committed, basically, uh, and you need to be able to. Uh, when I say committed, basically, I, what I mean what I mean is you need to stick to the approach that action research itself uh, uh, defines. So uh, you, you can't sort of like uh, begin with action research and then end with traditional research. You have to be very much focused and committed to what you're doing. You know. Uh, you have to also be able to engage with the people that you're working with, such as your students, and look at them as useful for your study to, to help you learn. So you can't look at them as different, you know, from from yourself. Basically, uh, again, one of the challenges is to do with the the you know the, the you need to balance between um, improving your practice and uh, what you're learning. You know, some things you can you can change, some things you can't change, as I said earlier. Uh, so there are certain you you will only understand this when you actually uh, look at what you want to change and look at what the literature is telling you you can do to create that change. You see what I mean? So you need to balance between those two and see how far you can go when you're using uh, action research. Now, in terms of ethics, again, you have to think about the well-being of of yourself and your participants. You know, so you can't just you know uh, do action research without some sort of consent. You need to have informed consent, of course, from your individuals, your gatekeepers, and the people who are in charge of, you know, uh, your department and so on. You also need to get uh, consent from the people you want to research, so you need to have something in writing. Of course, you need to be uh, able to protect the privacy and uh, confidentiality of the people who will be informing you of your practice. For example, I mentioned that we used action research with my colleague, uh, Dr. Alsawaya, with, with the students, but nobody knows you know which students these are. No, nobody knows them. You know, so uh, the the the, way, the reason why is because we have to protect them from uh, whatever it is that uh, might put our study at risk. And uh, like any other traditional research, action research also considers the issue of confidentiality and, and so on. Uh, the ethics basically uh, pretty much important. So you don't you don't harm your uh, you know your study or, or cause harm to others. So you have to minimize it or mitigate it and explain also how, you know, your study could be put at risk, you know, what's the bias here, you know, how do you try and use the data and so on, you know, so you have to uh, consider this. Okay. Now, uh, how do you, what do you do, you know, when you apply action research? So I've got a few examples. So here we have uh, action research, which can be applied in different fields, such as education, healthcare, community development. And this is our area, education and also maybe even healthcare for some of our uh, colleagues and community development. So uh, today, for example, we have a lot of studies going on, which the, uh, the government is sponsoring. You can look at uh, action research here and, and, and write something in terms of improving uh, some of the uh, developments going on in the community. So uh, in terms of education, we can use it to improve our teaching practices, uh, student learning, and also address some issues to do with inequality. You know, so these are places that you can look at. Uh, in terms of healthcare, uh, we can use it to improve, you know, the patient care that we're given. Uh, we can improve the delivery of, you know, the healthcare system, and, you know, uh, also promote this idea of evidence-based practice, which is something that's new 
and it's uh, uh, very much uh, respected in the healthcare practice. Um, in terms of community development, what do I mean here is look at the social issues, especially issues to do with, you know, uh, women, for example, uh, or uh, people who are marginalized, uh, young children, for example, uh, older men, you know, so many different things that are going on, issues to promote sustainable development, for example. So uh, this could be to do with technology, it could be with uh, the, the services provided by the government, it could be, and, and you see, when you say services provided by the government, here, you're talking about uh, giving information back to them so that they can see the impact of what they're doing on the ground because they don't have some of this information. So action research could be very useful to give feedback to uh, the providers of uh, so many different things uh, that are going on within the wider so uh, Saudi society. So uh, action research is, is powerful, basically. Um, in terms of uh, improvement, uh, action research also uh, aligns with the idea that you can improve yourself and adapt to what you're doing to, to grow. Basically. So it has this idea that, uh, you know, when you engage with others, you, you are involving other people. You are also trying to, uh, you know, come in as someone who is participating in action research to improve uh, what's going on. Uh, I, I hear some beeps in the classroom, but I'm going to come back to it in a second. I'm going to continue. Um, so, uh, you, you also look at how you can regularly engage in the process of action research so you can identify the different areas that you need to, to improve and enhance your practice. So basically, what this means is, in terms of moving from one cycle to the next cycle, uh, you, you look at what you've done, you look at the changes you've done, you look at what you've improved, and then you see the gap. You say, okay, well, we didn't improve this, and then that will become part of your next uh, sort of cycle. So the process here is where what you're using to learn from, and this contributes to your uh, next stage in terms of learning and improving your your practice. So you're continuously basically uh, helping your organization to respond to changes, re regardless of how big these changes are. Any change that you contribute towards will be uh, useful. So when you're writing your action research, you need to remember uh, to include these. Uh, changes and the challenges that you that you face. Now, I have a quiz here. I don't want to give you the answers, but you can you know take pictures of them and look at them later. I'm going to share the slides also with uh, Dr. Kamal and his team, and they're going to put it online. So when you come to these slides, use them to help you understand uh, what I've been talking about. First, we look at the question, which is the goal of action research, and then you have uh, one, two, three, four options to help you understand. Uh, which one is the right answer. Going through the slides that they will share with you and the video uh, for this presentation will help you understand uh, the goal. Again, what are the key features of action research? Uh, once you uh, go through the cycles and once you understand what we talked about, again, you will be able to see the answers. It's, it's not a secret. It's, it's quite uh, uh, open. But I want you to use this to guide your reading, especially if you are new to action research. So uh, another question could be, uh, the steps involved. What is the first step in the action research process, basically, so that you know that uh, you, you didn't start at the wrong end of the, the cycle, you know, so uh, you're moving in the right step. Uh, use this to help you uh, uh, when you're doing your study or, or writing your action research. Again, what is the benefit of action research? This is the last thing we just talked about. So use this to help you uh, understand uh, the benefits in terms to what you already know about research, and that is your traditional uh, view of research. And what are the challenges of action research? So uh, we will look at uh, use this to help you uh, understand how to improve the challenges. And these are the references. So I've got a lot of my research here with Dr. Sawai. So this is the first one, action research for unearthing paradigmatic uh, assumptions. Very, very useful, this one. Uh, it's got the DOI, so you can uh, use that to find our, our paper. We have this uh, paper which we shared in the Springer. Uh, this one is in the Arab world lead. And then I looked at Brookfield, who is very useful at helping you understand how to improve your teaching, if you want to look at teaching. And also Burns, if you want to know how to use uh, uh, sort of like action research for teachers uh, who are teaching English. So if you're coming in from a, from a nursing background or from a doc, uh, medical or healthcare background, you will find that there uh, is action research for healthcare or engineers or uh, you know uh, business uh, oriented uh, researchers also. 
thank you so much for allowing me to present and it's the end of our discussion I'm going to the room because I see a lot of Uh, people send the messages, but I, 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 I don't. Okay, is that all, Dr. Garba? Oh, can you hear me, Dr. Garba? Yes, it is. Oh, uh, good, I've good. given the floor for discussions if we have any. Fantastic, yes. Uh, the idea yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. If you have any questions for Dr. Ibrahim Karba, please use the chat box or you can use your mics. At the same time, I'm, I'm posting the important links for you. The first one is the evaluation form. Uh, again, Dr. Garba, it was a very, very wonderful and very valuable, informative, inspiring, interactive, and useful workshop. And really, it met our expectations. We have learned a lot. We enjoyed it. Uh, special thanks Thank you so much. To, to you and to all the participants. Inshallah, next week we'll have. Uh, thank you very much. We'll have another uh, break. Yeah, we'll have the first break. Then the other the other week we'll have the writing theoretical framework for research papers by Dr. Mona Saber. Inshallah. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Saba. Okay, I, have, I, I see some. I see a question here by Dr. Mohammed. Uh, he he posted some questions here. I think from my slide. I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, mashallah, Mohammed, Dr. Mohammed has seen it. Oh, it seems that he has yes. left. Yeah. Oh, I see. But he posted the questions, which is very useful. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. You're right, mashallah. Thank you, Brother Awad. Uh, this is the link, Sahar. And I, I posted it twice, and this is the third time, the first link. Thank you, Brother Munir. Thank you, Saba. Uh, I hope everybody could hear me, right, Doctor? Yes, yes, yes. MashaAllah, crystal clear. Thank you, Brother Al-Kareem. Thank you, Shok. Thank you, Jinan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ragad. Sure, sure. You can, you can uh, go ahead, uh, Ragad. You can open the mic and ask Dr. Ibrahim. Uh, can you, you hear me? Yes. Uh, I Ibrahim. want to ask about uh, the action research. So it's mainly uh, there has to be a problem, right? And I gather information and analyze it and evaluate my action. This is the main uh, purpose of this research, right? Can you hear the question, Dr. Ibrahim? Dr. Ibrahim? Uh, Dr. Ibrahim is facing a problem with the sound, I think. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim? Uh, I'm sending him a WhatsApp message <laughs> just to remind him. Dr. Ibrahim, can you hear us? He's reconnecting. He has a problem with the network. Inshallah, he'll come back. Uh, he could hear you, Ragad. Inshallah, he's, he's coming back. Uh, he's fixing the network problem. He can hear. He even could hear the question. Yeah, just wait for a, a few seconds. You can see the screen is fluctuating. 
Thank you, Brother Abdullah. Thank you, Brother Abdul Jabbar. Thank you, Brother Muhammad. Thank you, Brother Muhammad Yahya. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> oh, great. Alhamdulillah. Welcome back. So, uh, so uh, I heard so, so the, the first part of the question, uh, and then the lines sort of, I get disconnected. So, uh, again, could, who was I speaking with? Who was speaking? Rad, Rad, Rad was asking. Rad, you can repeat ah, the okay. question if you don't uh, mind. Okay, Are you with us now? Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, I was asking about the, uh, the action research. So the main uh, purpose of this research is uh, talking about the problem and all the analysis and action okay, yes. and evaluation, right? So that is the main purpose for this research. Yes. Yes. So, so I, are you are you coming from? Uh, are you a lecturer? Are you a student at KAU? Doctor. Let, let's say you're a, a, a lecturer at KAU or even a student and um, you, you have a problem with, for example, uh, some of your students. Uh, every time you use the course book, there is one particular uh, issue uh, that is very difficult. And you want to know why is it that students have a problem learning this? And you say to yourself, I'm going to... Uh, design a new intervention to help my students understand this particular problem and you do that and then when you finish you discover that uh, actually it wasn't the, the your your the book that was causing the problem it was probably you uh, or maybe it wasn't you it was probably the something that the students learned uh, before they came to your classroom so this is how you use action research to help you uh, understand uh, issues that are taking place in your classroom. Um, let's say you're not a, a teacher. Let's say you are an administrator and you're working with uh, Shunta Alameen, for example. And you want to know why is it that when we share information with our students, they always uh, fail to come for the exam. Then you discover that when you send the tweets, for example, you use Twitter, uh, the message doesn't get to the students on time or some students don't, don't use Twitter. You know what I mean? So you use action research to get you information that will help you understand um, what's going on in your practice. So it's not the same thing as doing research whereby you just want to know, oh, okay, uh, we've gathered the data, we, we finished, we published it, KU is going to pay us a lot of money because we published in a good journal. But at the end of the day, the outcome of that research or the results that you got from that research didn't help you improve your teaching or your work as an administrator. So this is to do with the uh, uh, stakeholder engagement. It also didn't help you improve what you are doing as a teacher so that you can say, oh, well, I have a new way of teaching this particular concept in my classroom. And also it didn't help you as a researcher because as a researcher who likes to use statist uh, statistics all the time, you always gather the same information, use the questionnaire, use the, you know, numbers to tell you what's going on. Here, you probably went out and said to your students, well, what do you guys think about what I did? And they told you, well, it's good, but what we think, uh, we don't need it. That's why we don't we don't use it. And then you discovered something new, you see, because you just simply asked them, right? So yeah, you always start with something that's puzzling you with your workplace. And that's how you do that. So you say, yes, that's salam. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you, Rod. You're welcome, Rod. Thank you, Ahmad, for your question. Sure. Okay, somebody's asking um, which field uh, improves with action research. Uh, well, it, it's like asking me how long is a piece of string. Uh, where, which, which field are you coming from? Are you are you coming from engineering? Are you coming from uh, medicine? Are you coming from uh, you know uh, business? Are you coming from economics? Are you coming from accounting? Are you coming from computing? Where, where, are you, where are you coming from? You see, so the field that you're coming from is what you will be using to help you with the research. And then what, when you when you do the action research, you're improving your, your practice in that particular field. Uh, yes, Dr. Sabah. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Abraham, for the brilliant session, actually. So this is, yeah, that was my question, <laughs> asking about the action research in relation yeah. to higher education. So, yeah, um, it's actually coming from the field of management, if I could be more specific. So, yeah. So so if you're coming from the field of management, for example, yeah. uh, uh, some of the research I've done in the past involved management, and one of the things that we're looking at in management is, let's say, the issue of effectiveness, right? Uh, exactly. In your department, maybe you've created something and you want to know uh, whether that particular uh, uh, decision that was made uh, was effective. Now, when you talk about decision, you could start thinking about uh, the different ways that people make decisions in your in your in management. You know, we have. Uh, collaborative decision making. You have, you know, the administrator who wields the the, the his his office like a like a sword. You know, he he or she makes the decision, and nobody else makes the decision. They don't like to share anything with anyone. Uh, you, you could look at uh, yeah, it may made. happen absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you see, exactly, yeah. exactly. So these kinds of uh, areas are worth investigating, but you need to be able to tell the people that you're working with that you're going to investigate them when you want to do action research. So uh, you have to select basically uh, the area that will not cause problems for you, if, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. What I mean by this is you have to be ethical in, in terms yeah, the of telling people, look, I'm exactly. going to research the ethical this. improvement, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Am I clear? So yeah. it's yeah. about so they could help you. improvement. Absolutely. They could be very helpful for you also, you know, because okay. they, the problems that you face will, might be the same problems that other people face, you see, and you're trying to make their lives uh, easier by researching this to see, to see how you can improve it. And this is where action research tells you, look, uh, as you move from this cycle, to when you design this, when you plan this, when you take action here, uh, this is what happens. This is what ha what you expect it to happen. Maybe, you know, you start by, by something like, you know, if we do this, what's going to happen? And then something else happens, you see. So, you know, you 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 do a lot of, um, yeah, someone says, yeah, yeah, yeah says, yeah, there's, uh, in my humble advice for you, uh, start by reading more research articles and see how research is actually conducted. So, so here, what we have is the contrast between traditional research and uh, uh, action research. And unless you know the difference, unless you know something about traditional research, it's very difficult to know uh, how action research differs from uh, traditional research. Um, but I think it's clear when you are going to do action research, you're coming in as someone who wants to improve their practice and you are coming in as someone who is working with other people and you're also coming in as a person who works there, but you're also the researcher. You see, so so these these things are different from your normal traditional research. So uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Dr. Sabah. Thank you. Wonderful question, wonderful answer, Dr. Sabah and Dr. Ibrahim. Uh, actually, Dr. Yahya gave the advice to Sister Rodaina, Dr. Ibrahim, regarding her question in the chat box. Do you have any advice on how to begin and what I should keep uh, in mind? Yeah, the Dr. Yahya gave here and his own idea. If you have, if you need to add more, where where to begin? Uh, yeah, the question. Well, as I said do you earlier, have any advice on, on how how to begin and what I keep in mind? Uh, yeah, so if you want to, like like any other research, if you want to begin action research, you begin with. Uh, the issue that's troubling you, what's 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 puzzling you, you know, what's what's the um, what's the, the you know, you have desires, right? And sometimes these desires are connected to uh, where you are working. So you have some kind of real life, real world issue that you want to enhance or improve in your practice. This is where you begin. So you, you are looking at um, the issue, not not as uh, some kind of phenomenon that makes you think how can i generate knowledge here to contribute you know to or to develop to to improve no you're 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 looking at something that's happening in your workplace or in your immediate environment and you're trying to say well i, I want to change this how, how can i change this and then when you do the reading you start to say well i read something about let's 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 use some practical examples um during the COVID 19 for example uh this is a very good example many people were saying don't take the vaccine now, instead of saying don't take the vaccine, if you're a healthcare uh, or you know, healthcare giver here, you could say, well, 
uh, people are afraid of the vaccine. Why is that? Because it's affecting your your practice, right? And then you research this. You ask questions. You share uh, uh, questionnaires. You you invite people, you know, and then you gather the information. Then you find out that actually none of them read any journal. They just heard this from YouTube or from, you know, Instagram or if, it depends on how old they are. If their friend in the masjid, the friend in the, in the coffee shop, you know, they heard of someone talking about it and then they just circulated the information. But then when you look at researchers now and you say, well, this is what some researchers have uh, discovered. You compare what you're finding and then you're talking about it in terms of, you see, you now, now you're entering the research space because you are the researcher and then you're contributing to knowledge by giving your own views uh, about how to uh, improve, uh, you know, issues of vaccine fear, for example, so to speak. I hope that, that helps. Wonderful question, wonderful answer, mashallah. Thank you very much, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Other questions before Dr. Ibrahim leaves? Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. Okay. We have some amazing students to hear you and, and uh, professionals too, mashallah. Yes, yes you, are, you are right. You are absolutely right, yeah. Mashallah. If there are no more questions, I will leave you can rest. All right. Thank you very much. I'll share the slide mm -hmm. with you, Dr. Kamal, and then you can... Yeah, if you uh, don't see. mind, because uh, so, yeah. uh, some participants uh, requested it, if you don't mind, yeah. Yeah, Thanks it's a my pleasure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You do a great job, actually, Dr. Ibrahim. MashaAllah. May Allah reward thank you, you so and bless thank you, you and your family and exactly your efforts. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Wassalam, everybody. Good night. Right. Our pleasure.